Let me give reverence to God and to the Son, Jesus, and to the Holy Spirit who is present with us today. Let me give honor to our deacons who stand faithfully Sunday in and Sunday out, our associate ministers here on staff. We thank God for the Reverend Marcel Lyles, Reverend Carlos Lyles, Reverend Ernest Kaya, Reverend Carol Thick Penn. We give God praise for all of them, for my lovely wife, uh, Sister Kaya, and to all of you, God's children, to this wonderful musician staff and his brotherhood and all of you God's children. We give God praise. Amen? Amen. 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 In the Gospel of John, chapter 15, you will find a very encouraged printed word there um, as we today uh, celebrate uh, uh, family and friends. We certainly thank God for family and we thank God for friends. Amen. I know um, some of us, if not most of us, if not all of us in here, we have good family, and some of us have good friends. Amen. And it's good when you have both good family and good friends. Amen. And as we look in the Gospel of John, chapter 15, uh, when your heart has found it, you would kindly say amen. 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 You'll find plenty of verses Scripture written, we we'll start at the first verse. Uh, Jesus uh, says, I am the true vine, and my Father is the husbandman. And every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it, that it may bring forth more fruit. I pray you get that, what Jesus is saying here. He says, now you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except you abide in me. I am the vine. Ye are the branches. He that abided in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me you can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is willed and men gathered them and cast them into the fire, and they are burned. But then if we, uh, uh, well, we go to the, uh, he says in the seventh verse, if you abide in me and my word abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be done unto you. Herein in my Father glorified that ye bear much fruit, so you be my disciples. Now let's jump down to the 15 and the 16 verse. He says, henceforth, in other words, Jesus said, not going forward, I call you not servants, for the servants know not what his Lord doeth, but I have called you friends. For all things that I have heard of my Father, I have made known unto you. Then he says, you've not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Let me stop there and for a moment. I just want to use for a subject what a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. I know we sang that song and we've sung it for many years. What a friend we have in Jesus. But what a friend we really do have in Jesus. As we, uh, as a church, we celebrate family and friends. As I mentioned, it's good to have family. It's good when you know your family is there for you. It's good to know that you are there for your family. I believe in family. Family is everything. Um, matter of fact, Jesus teach family. God is the, when you look at God, he, he is the, 
epitome of family. He, he is what family is all about. He, he, he has such a relationship with his son. So we know that family is about relationship. Family is very important. And then Jesus uh, talked about friend here. He, uh, when we look at this verse, and I'm going to try not to be long with us this morning, but he talks about friend. So in other words, Jesus tells us as much as we love friend, uh, family, we have to also respect friendship. We have to uh, trust friendship. Now, I, I realize that, that, that we live in a, a time now where friends can be kind of fickle. You, you really don't know if they're friends or not. I, I, I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to concentrate and focus on that this morning because I realize some of us sitting in this church, in this, church this morning may have been burned by some friends. And, 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 and if you have, then they really was not. Y'all going to help me this morning? But, but, but a true friend, I'm, I'm talking about a true friend, a real friend. Uh, Jesus went out on a limb once and said, I'll be a friend and stick closer. So, so Jesus says uh, a friend, a real friend is a little different than a so-called friend. And, and some of us have had what we call some so-called friends. And, and, and it made us hard to, to try to even make friends again. Let, let me just tell you, when I took time to just look up the word friend, it's a person who has a strong liking for a trust in another. A strong liking because I want you to see when Jesus shifted this relationship from calling them servants to calling them friends. It, it, it says it's, it's really close friends who like to do everything together and are always sharing secret. A person who actively supports a favor. And, and we know that we always say, I found favor in God. So someone had to find friend. I was I was amused to find the word favor there because we always talk about how God show favor to us because Jesus says I am now your friend. Jesus is getting ready to leave them in this chapter when we look at this, but he take time to explain relationship. Can somebody show relationship? relationship. Reverend Thickpen, in this world. You cannot have a relationship with Jesus if you don't know how to have a relationship with each other. Relationship involved from knowing someone, Deacon. Relationship come from spending time with someone. A, a relationship is developed over time. Uh, a relationship come from you and that person spending much time together. Yes, now, now, I hope this don't go over nobody here. So, so a relationship comes from when you, you normally spend the course of your day and month and years with that person. And, and, and that builds a relationship. Uh, uh, Pastor, why are you focusing on that? Because uh, if, if you're not spending time with Jesus, and if you're not spending some time with him, then you really not in a relationship. I, I, I would feel sorry for someone to say that they're in a relationship with someone, but never spend time with the person they say they y'all gonna help me? So, so, so that means that he don't have to beg you to pray to him. He don't have to beg you to thank him. He don't have to beg you to take some time out to spend with him because you're already in a relationship. Relationships are critical. First with God and with each other. And the reason some people struggle in relationship with each other because they have a very estranged relationship with God. So it's hard to try to love someone when love is not in you. Pastor, what you're saying? The Bible says God is love. And, and, and in order to start loving others, you have to first love God. And the love of God will give you the strength to love Others. You have to trust God through the relationship. God said, I'm going to take your places. You cannot trace me, but yet you will still have to trust me. Tell two people, trust God. Trust God. You, you got to trust God. You got to trust him when you can't see him. 
You need to know that God is there. I, I, I don't care how bleak it is, how bad it is. You have to know that God is there. Relationship open doors. Relationship gives you jobs. Relationship gives you favor. Relationship gives you peace. Relationship do things for you that other people just can't do other things. There's something about relationship. If you know the right person, relationship can get you places. You ever heard of those saying, hey, what you know is who you know? So, so there's something about relationship that it puts you in places that you can't go by yourself. And, and God is in them. Let me tell you something about God. God loves you so much that when others say no, God can make them say yes. When, when things don't go right, God has a way of working on people to turn their mind, change their mind, turn some things around. God has a way of opening doors that would have never opened. He closed doors that, had, that, that nobody can open. God has a way of working things out. God can do it. Come on and tell two people he can do it. I have three points I want to make again. I'm going to uh, set, take my seat. There's three things that stand out to me in this relationship and, and by Jesus being our friend. Abide, chosen, and love. Abide, chosen, and love. In order for this relationship with Jesus to work, he says, you have to abide in me. He said, if you abide in me, I will abide. That word abide, let me give you that definition to that word, and then you would understand what Jesus was coming from when he asked his disciples to abide in him. Abide means to accept or act in accordance with a decision, a recommendation. He says, abide, act in accordance with me, comply with me, obey Observe, follow. All these words is under abide. Keep to hold to, conform, to stick with, to stand by. He says, if you abide in me, I abide in you. Now watch this. He said, if you stick with me, I'm going to stick with you. If you stay with me, I stay with you. Jesus, Jesus, this word abide, he said, he expects everybody to abide by the rules. In other words, Jesus said, there's some rules and regulations, but I need you to abide in me. I, I need you to trust me. Watch this. Trust in God means that when things don't go the way you think they should go, you still got to trust God. When God did not heal that person that you thought you prayed for, you thought God didn't answer your prayer, can you still abide? Is Jesus still your friend? Yes. After he don't do what you thought he should have done, would you still say he's still my friend? Yes. Do you feel what I'm saying? When, 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 when there's been some stress and some pressure, when you pray to God and you say, I know God can do this, and his answer was different than what you wanted, would you still say he's still yet my friend? He's my friend. Abide in me. Abide. 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 Trust me. He says you got to abide in me. That, that means that no, no, when you go through the right time, he says abide in me. When folk, when folk walk out on you, you still got to trust me. You got to abide. You got to abide. He says I need you to trust me. Walk with me. Look, Jesus says, are you going to still abide? Yeah. Are you still going to be my friend? When I don't let things go the way you want it, because you know some friends, only your friend because of what they can get out of the friendship. Some friend, Mother Barker, will only be your friend as long as you're doing what, you, what, they, what, what they want you to do. But what about when they don't do what you want them to do? Is they still your friend? A true friend is honest with you. I was telling my wife, I said, a true friend is honest. A true friend is when you go shopping with her, and she go in the dressing room and try something on, and the salesman say, girl, that look good on you. And you know it don't look good on you? A true friend would say, girl, look, 
you need to go up by two sides to go on there. It may hurt your feelings, it may not feel right, but a true friend ain't gonna let you look back. A true friend gonna tell you what you don't want to hear sometimes. I, I, I know, I know, I know you don't like this, but a true friend ain't gonna agree with everything you say and everything you do just to satisfy you. A true friend will say, look, this is not the time for this. He says, abide in me, and I abide in you. And, and I, I come to find out that it's your relationship with Jesus going to change when he lets you go through the trenches. Me and this guy named Floyd, when we was growing up on the hill, we used to fight every day we got off the bus. Someone would just force us to fight. Now we're friends. But every day we got off the bus, the Jones would pick her and push us up to fight one another. We out there rolling around in the dirt and fighting like two fools. But after some time, I come outside, he come outside, he'll look at me and I look at him, say, still friends? He say, still friends. So no matter how much we fight, we will still, Pastor, what you saying? No matter what Jesus take you through, no matter what he allow you to go through, no matter how much suffering you go through, when the suffering is over, can you still say to him, Still friends? Friend. Jesus is still my friend. When your prayer don't go the way you, you want it to go, Deacon Clayton, when we prayed for my mother, we prayed that God would turn that around. We prayed that, that God would heal her body. And we believed that God would do just that. But Jesus done something different. So my, my question is, when he do something different than you want him to do, are you still going to say, what a friend? He said, my, my father, in the beginning of the scripture, he said, my father is the husband man. He said, my father would come along and take out things that don't allow fruit to produce itself. Reverend, Reverend, can I get y'all to come in for a minute? Reverend Carlos, Reverend Marcel. Let me do this illustration. I got about 20 minutes. I want to show you something. Some people are better with sight than they are with just hearing the word. Yes, sir. Let me tell you what God does for us. Doc, I want you to hang this on Reverend Carlos for me. That's selfishness he's hanging. Keep hanging. That's a line he's hanging on, Reverend Carlos. Because some of us selfish, some of us lie. That's hatred. He's saying, I want you to start hanging on this other end as well. Says that when my father is the husband man, 
And my father would come through and he would see what needs to be purged and pruned. And so my father said, for this tree to look the way I want it to look, I have to get rid of some things. So he, he started pruning the tree. And back by he said, I got to get rid of it. Betrayal, I, I don't want that on you. That, that's not good for your tree. Lying, I, I got to get rid of that because it's, 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 it's not healthy for you. Slander, I, I need to get rid of that. that that's not good for you. Envy is not good to be on you. That's not going to help you at all. Hatred, I, I, I just can't stand it. I, I, I need to shake this tree up. Reverend, I want you to grab those others from me. He says, I need this to bear good fruit because he's connected to me. Abuse, I, I don't want that a part of you. Selfishness, I, I, I just can't have that. So he began to take away what you was made of. And the father began to start replacing it. And then he started bringing good fruit. He brings gentleness. He brings faithfulness. He brings kindness. He brings goodness. He brings friends. But watch this. But he says, some of your friends, I'm not going to take it from you, but I'm going to cut some of them off. He says, I'm, I'm going to leave you with some friends, but there are some of them don't mean you any good. So I'm going to prune this friend. You're saying, God, those friends I've been walking with all my life. You say, but... You don't need them. I got to make you the way I want you. You said, but God, you just took away my butt. He said, but mm -mm. you thought he was your buddy. I'm going to get rid of him. God, he'd been with me for five years. He said, I know, but for five years he was tearing you down. So he pruned that friend. Forbearance. Patient. He pruned patient. Because patient has been a problem of yours. He says, you're not where I need you to be. You don't have enough. You've been asking me for things, but you don't have. He says, so I need to fix the patient with you because you've been one who's been very short. So I'm going to prune that up for you. I'm going to take care of that. Compassion. He said, you struggle with that. You got people you could have done something for, but because you had no... There was people I wanted you to help, but you had no... So he says, I'm going to I'm 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 shake that up for you. I'm going to prune that for you. Righteousness. Forgiveness. He said, you struggle so much with forgiveness. You got people you still need to. So he said, I'm going to help you with that, Reverend. He said, those people hurt you 15 years ago and you still can't. You've been sick, he said, because you've been struggling with. So I'm going to shake that up for you. I got to prune that. Now he's coming in the garden. The husband man is trimming you up. But he said, that's all right. When I get through with you, you're going to have a little joy. When I get done with you, you're going to have some charity. When I get done with you, you're going to have some happiness. When I'm through with you, Reverend, he said, you're going to have some peace. And most of all, Reverend, he said, you're going to be drowned in my love. He said, now you're looking like my friend. Now you can say, what a friend we have in Jesus. Because he done shake me up, he done took care of me. The husband man done cut back some things that I didn't need and replaced some things that I did need. He caused me now to bring forth some good fruit. So when people have me now, what comes out is good fruit now. Goodness come out. Joy comes out. Happiness come out. God said, I'll dress this tree now. This tree is full of good. Yeah. <laughs>
He says, henceforth, you're no longer a servant. He said, you are my friend. So my second point I want to let out the Bible, he says, you are chosen. Come on and tell your neighbor, chosen. chosen. You didn't choose him, he chose you. And everything you're doing now is because God chose you. You're sitting there, a child of God today because God took time to choose you. Glory be to God. Oh, I can't give you a bad, still love me. Love me for who I am. 
God is love. Love. Come on and tell two people love. Feel good. 